Hello guys, welcome. And if you have seen my channel before, welcome back. I'm the Philadelphia Whovian. And this is a continuation of my previous video that I posted of my top 60 classic Who stories. And the first video was 60 through 51. If you want to know what those were, I'm not going to lie, I don't want to waste any time doing a recap, so please just watch that one so we can get right on to the next one. So this video is going to be between the numbers 50 and 41. And again, I'm going to get very clear, if thinking, well, that's pretty, 50 through 41, that must mean she doesn't like these episodes that much, that's why they're so low on the list. No, I like 1 through 60, I like the, a lot of these episodes on this list so much. The ones that got lower on the list was actually mostly nitpicking. That's what it is. And they had to go somewhere. Really? Classic Who is abundant with great episodes, as well as episodes that people, well, even if they're not, they're not perfect, they still have a lot of good in them. That's how I should put it. They're not perfect, but have a lot of good in them. So without further ado, let's begin with our list of starting with number 50 on the list. Number 50 is episode that I think gets more credit nowadays for being overlooked and underrated because it comes between two nice big heavy hitter episodes. And that is the Centauran Experiment. I absolutely enjoy the Centauran Experiment. And I love that it's only two episodes. It's just, that's all it needs. It does not need to be dragged out into a four-parter. Thank God it was not dragged out into a four-parter. It knew what it was, and it did it very, very well. The Centauran Experiment is also a very good use of its environment, so it probably was not an expensive episode to film. As well as, I personally think... I know people get crit criticized the um, Centauran experiment because um, the Centauran doesn't have as good makeup as the first time we see a Centauran in the Time Warrior. I actually think I might like this better, this makeup design better than the one from the Time Warrior. I like that one. It's like, ooh, that was stuck out to you. But I think it was just this one allowed the actor, I think, more more movement in their face, it might have been easier for them to wear. That's what I really think it is. But I think this is a very good story. All the characters are necessary, they're important, they do what needs to be done. I personally like them, and I like Harry Sullivan and Sarah Jane Smith a lot when it comes to this doctor. So, Centauran Experiment is my number 50. Now, number 49. Ooh, ooh, guys, yeah, this is an episode that everyone thinks sucks, but I just enjoy watching it. That, that, you know, we all, we're all subjective people, and for me, 49, Silver Nemesis. Oh, God. I love the Doctor and Ace in this so much. They work off each other so very well. It's just absolutely wonderful to watch them in this. And... Also, I just like, I've said it before, I'll say it again, when my, you saw my Guilty Pleasures, Pleasures episode, you'll see it now. With that video about my Guilty Pleasures, it, I said, I love Lady Painfort. I think Lady Painfort is great. I love the design for the Nemesis a great deal. I love when the Doctor plays the jazz music in outer space. You, uh, you see the Cy Cybermen fleet. I know that it's like, why the hell are the Nazis in this? But whatever. I, I can take them. I'll deal with it. I will deal with it, darn it. And I'll get over it. Uh, I just think there's a lot of cleverness in this. Uh, and also a really good use of their environment. The Doctor and the Companion, they go to so many different locations. And I just, I like Silver Nemesis, guys. What do you want from me? What do you want? I'm, you know, I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm not going to. I just like Silver Nemesis. Okay. So, and also I have fun in Silver Nemesis. I really do. Mm -hmm. So, for 48, I think we're in 48 now. Sorry if I've got that number wrong. We're now at the Ark in Space. Okay. You're going to kill me, because this usually gets in a lot of top ten episodes, but the arc in space, I like the story. I think the story is very good. I just, there's something about it, I just don't have that much of an interest to go back and rewatch. As often, I don't know what it is. I know you're going to say you're weird for not being higher on your list. That's just the way the cookie crumbles with me. The arc in space, I enjoy the story. It just simply is not one I'm that eager to go back and rewatch. And I think it's because... With this one, something about the pacing, it just feels a little slow. And I think they were trying to build build atmosphere and really build up like the tension and things sometimes. But a little bit early on, it's just things feel a little bit too slow. 
It's like you're really trying to fill out that four episode slot. It just felt like it was the action was there, they just weren't getting into it fast enough. And if you're going to think, oh, you're one of those people who needs action every few seconds, I don't. I do not. I'm just saying something about it didn't work here. The pacing. But again, this is a very, very good story. I am not going to lie. Okay, so for number 47, I do not have this on DVD because I can't afford it. It's just too expensive. But for number 47, I actually really like, so imagine the DVDs here. <laughs> Sorry. Revelation of the Daleks with the Sixth Doctor. Okay, this is an episode which uh, was problematic for me. The first time I saw it, which was on online, and the quality was not very good at all. It was just, it did Online does not do these stories justice. It doesn't. You have to watch it because it's all that's there, and I'm happy online is there, but it doesn't do them justice by far. So, uh, when I first watched it, I could tell it was good. I just did not get entertained by it, really. And this is when I was doing my Six Doctor list. So, I couldn't really put it on my top five Six Doctor list because I just didn't feel that connected to it. Then, I finally was able to go back and rewatch it with better quality. Again, it's a matter of you need to watch Doctor Who episodes twice sometimes to really appreciate it. You watch it the first time, you're looking for what it's not versus what it is. Then you watch it the second time, looking for what it is versus what it's not. Revelation of the Daleks, Daleks age well. It's, it has now become some one of my favorite of the six Doctor stories. It really has. Okay, so number... 46, I believe. I think we're at number 46. It is the Tomb of the Cybermen. Ooh, I like the Tomb of the Cybermen. I like it a great deal. Uh, again, I love the Cybermen stories for the Second Doctor. I love his interactions. I love this with Victoria, with Jamie, them together. I love all that. The only thing that's holding Tomb of the Cybermen back for me is I couldn't understand what the Cybermen were saying. <laughs> like, I have to have subtitles on. I, 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 You can call me hard of hearing. I am, I admit. I'm not the easiest of hearing. It's, that's why I'm always loud. Because I can't always hear so well. I admit to that. But I just feel like I'm like, oh, I wish that Cybermen had articulated more. <sighs> that's all it is. So I know many people love the Cyber Tomb of the Cybermen and put it in their number one slot. I know people who do not like Tomb of the Cybermen. It's like, it's overrated. I like it just fine. It's just that, oh, those Cybermen. Ooh. Enunciate, please. Also, I think this is the story where we get the introduction to the Cybermats. I could be wrong without, about that. I could be very wrong. Mm -hmm. So, are we at number 45 now? I think we are. So, number 45, we have Legopolis. I don't see this story on many top lists at all, but I really like Legopolis. I like it a lot. <laughs> I like this story. I like the return of the master, how it segues into the fifth doctor's first story with Castra Valva. I love many things about it. We introduced a Tegan, and then we got Nisa back, and I personally love Nisa. I like Tegan and Nisa together with the doctor, and Adric is there. I don't I don't hate Adric like many people do. I, I don't. He's not perfect. He says things that annoy me, but so did Tegan. You know, quite a few companions every now and again said things that annoyed me. I saw his love for Nisa and Tegan sometimes, so you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't hate Adric, he's just not perfect. But with I also liked Legopolis itself. I know some people think that the idea of the fourth doctor dying because he just falls from like a fall from like high up is anticlimactic. I'm fine with it. I don't I don't need the master or Cybermen or Docs to kill the doctor. I'm okay with just something like that happening. I'm fine with it. I don't it's fine. Mm-hmm. So there's that concept. The idea of trying to flush the doctor out by just landing in the ocean, that's funny. And the Watcher, that was a really interesting idea. And the idea of the Watcher, so the fifth doctor, coming back to assist the fourth doctor or talk tell the fourth doctor about what's where he's going and where he's headed. That's just very unique to me. I'm and also, the duh, the master's back to shrinking people. Ooh. But oh man, do I enjoy that. Mm hmm. I really do. I absolutely like it. Um, it's not my fave, fave, as you can see where it's fallen, but it's still great. What can I do? 
okay? All right, so I think we're number 44. Sorry if I'm totally wrong about that. I think we're 44. And we now have back to a Cyberman story. Sorry, it's a collection. But Fifth Doctor now, Earth Shock. Earth Shock? Now, this is a roller coaster for me. When I first saw it, I absolutely loved Earthshock. Absolutely wonderful. Um, then I watched it a few more times, and I think what happened is, I think I overwatched it. I think that's where I'm at now, where I accidentally have overwatched the episode, and so it doesn't hold as high a place as it used to. But I know I'm aware that's probably what's happening. And when I overwatch things, they're not as great sometimes. That's what happened with Earthshock. So that's probably why it's kind of low on the list. It's simply that I overwatched it, but it's overall very, very very good story. Very good use. The Cybermen are back and don't worry, it's not terrible. It's not. And I think maybe the also the other reason it's holding it back is the same reason I love it. It's that the Doctor kind of, not the Doctor himself, but his incident, sometimes the Doctor's actions can cause a catastrophe. We saw it in the visitation, but we see it with Earth Shock, where something happened where the Doctor couldn't save something, so he switched it into different little something, something, whatever else. And now he, what he did is going to cause the blackout, which led to the destruction of the dinosaurs. But you can't change history when you're a part of it, as the 11th Doctor says. So it's really not really the 5th Doctor's fault at all. It's just the hand that this Doctor has been dealt, where he ends up being the beginning or helps assist in the problem that actually did occur. But it's not really his fault. He's just a part of history. It's all he is. He can't change it. And all he does is the best he can do. So there's that. I think we're now at... I think we're at 43, and we're here now at Resurrection of the Daleks, another Fifth Doctor story. I know that this is tale is awesome by some and overrated by others. That's just what life is like. Resurrection of the Daleks, I was very happy to see Davros back again, and those, you know, people trying to kill, you know, just trying to protect trying to get to Davros, to get Doc's trying to kill kill to get to Davros, and the people like, you know, trying to just do everything they could to keep him from getting to Davros, and even when to sacrifice themselves to the bitter end. I like that stuff. I like the return of Davros. I like all the screen time he was given. Same with Revelation of the Daleks. That's what I like about those two stories. They give Davros a lot of screen time. Unlike some episodes. <laughs> journey's end. <laughs> journey's end. Sorry. You're gonna bring back Davros. Bring back Davros. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm cool. I'm cool. Mm hmm But, so I like that, you know, all the screen time Davros was given. And the dilemma the doctor's in, the doctor said, that's it, I'm going to kill Davros. I like the doctor was like, you know what, I'm just done. I'm freaking done. And yet it doesn't happen, but I like that he got to that place. I like that he was the, the seed idea of the doctor going to that place. I just think it's unique. Um... And also, with the time corridor, I think it's cool too. I think, think there's a lot going for this episode. But I see why people do not like Resurrection of the Daleks. I do, but I get why people think it's very overrated. I understand why. Mm -hmm. So, there's that. And we also see a character that we're going to see again in Attack of the Cybermen. I can't remember that character's name right now, but very good addition to the concept because he becomes a, a character that is given some continuity. He really is. Mm -hmm. So it's very unique there. And then we have Tegan's departure. Now, I know many people love Tegan. Um, I don't hate her. I'm fine with her. But I didn't care one way or the other about her departure. I was like, okay, it's there. It's happening. Whatever. It's cool. It's cool. It's fine. It's all right. It's all right. You know, good. Tegan, you had some your good points. You had your high points. You had your low points. But whether you're here or you're gone, I'll survive. Nothing, no offense against Tegan, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. So, number, I think we're at 42 right now, and that is another Fifth Doctor story from his last season, Planet of Fire. This is an episode that no, not many people at all talk about. Like, I hear no one talk about it. It's another good episode, very good episode, that got lost in the shuffle. It really did. It just got lost completely in the shuffle. But it's excellent. I have a lot of things I absolutely love about it. It brings me Perry, a companion I love. And, you know, 
Turlo is at some of his best here. The master is back, and he's com it's in a, almost a comedic way, but hey, I'm fine with it. I'll take it for what it is. And they have the idea of Logar, and in terms of the idea of how far people go, they'll sacrifice other ones to, to the flame because they do not believe. They test the faith. Of, we've seen that happen in history plenty of times. I just find there's a lot of creativity in Planet of Fire. And we find out Turlo's origin story, like where Turlo, Turlo came from. I like it. And I think, again, I said before in my top 10 Fifth Doctor stories, I think this story gets hate because Chameleon appears here where he wasn't there before for the longest time. But this story can't be blamed for that. They didn't build a Chameleon before this. So what can you do? What can you, it's not this story's fault. Number 41. Inferno. From the third Doctor story. Oh, uh, here's where I get the hate. How dare you put Inferno so low on the list? I said it before, I love every story on this list. I do. I love them a lot. I really do like them. It's just that Inferno has only one problem for me. And that's, I just don't think it, I think it could have been one episode shorter. And I love my seven parters. You're going to see seven parters on this list throughout, you know, I love longer stories. But something about Inferno just feels a little bit dragged out. I just feel like if it was one episode shorter, it would have been a lot tighter. Something about it, the more I go back and rewatch it, it's like, oh, I like the story. I love everything about the story. It just feels like it goes on for a little bit too long. It feels like the pacing, of, it just gets a little bit too slow. And that's all it is. It just loses its, loses its momentum. That's all it is. But again, I love the story, love everything about the story, love the parallel worlds. Um, it just, everything is good. I like the idea of the, you, they, they touch the green stuff, whatever it is, and they turn to these creatures. Um, I admit the makeup could have been better for those werewolves, whatever they were, but I don't care. It's neither here nor there. The, that, I, the oh, center around that is very good, and they're scary creatures in many ways. Oh, they're so frightening. So I absolutely love the story. My only nitpick is I just think it could have been better if it was a six, I think a six-parter instead of a seven. I just think it drags on, drags on a little bit too long. That's it. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This is now my next list in the countdown of my top 60. Again, going from, I believe, 50 to 41. Did I get that right? Yes, I believe I did that. Thank you. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope I'll be very soon delivering that next video of the top 41 through, dear God, 30? Sorry, I don't know where I'm going now. I admit that, I admit, I'm sorry, 40 through 31. That's where we got it, I'm sorry. Numbers mess my head. I'm not very good with them. But thank you guys so very much. Hope to see you again very soon. Bye, guys.